Hello and welcome to Mike Bithell's second game called Volume. The guy that brought you uh, Thomas Was Alone has now brought a completely different game out with Stealth as the core. Now the idea is to collect those shiny little round objects that are spinning around there, those little diamonds, and they represent uh, loot basically. So the idea is that you are in a virtual reality simulation of a real place, and a hundred real places, and you are sending this out to people that are then actually using your information to not die like I just do now, and actually collect the real loot in the real world. That's as simple as I can possibly make it, okay? <laughs> so. The idea is that there are guards here in this virtual simulation of the real house and they can see and hear you and here you go. You, I've just triggered him now by stepping on one of those pads. He will then come out of his designated zone and look for me. Now as long as I'm hidden, he will just think, ah, forget it, and he'll walk off. That allows me to run across here and as you can see by the circle there, I'm not within his radius and therefore he thinks nothing of it. Now, there are several pickups along the way. Uh, this is just one of them. It allows me to throw sound. And again, throwing sound will alert the guard to that location and I can sneak past. Now, there are a couple of ways of getting around the guards. They're not always the brightest. And in a moment, you'll see me uh, manage to dodge one. Uh, you will see me die a fair few times though because um, I was trying to take a phone call at the same time as doing this so it didn't really work out too well but the idea is always the same um, the levels are always harder and there are more things in them because there are guards and I've seen dogs and I've also seen turrets and they they path as well they'll have a path on them and there'll be several of them in an area going diagonally and in circles and in squares and you've got to work your way through it and, 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 and that's where the challenge really comes in. Now quite a few people have said that they find the colour and the minimalist look, uh, I mean the colour they say is a bit garish and the minimalist look is a bit, well just minimalist really and I, I, don't, I think it's one of the strengths in fairness because you can pick this game up and know exactly what you're doing, where you're supposed to be going, what you're supposed to be picking up, and what you're supposed to be avoiding, right off the door. Right off the bat. And I think that's probably one of its, you know, strong points. That and the sound design, I really love it. I like the sound, I like the volume, I like the... I like the volume. I like um, the ominous sound of the, the these robots or humans that you're trying to avoid, just clonking around, so like menacingly. And they instantly have a, you know, the, the, the sound on it instantly lets you know you don't mess with these guys, uh, you don't mess with this, and, and, and to avoid them. And yeah, I can't really grumble at the sound design at all. If there is one thing I'm going to grumble about though, it is that the story is a little bit threadbare. Now you'll get a little bit of story on bits like this, but because you're picking up the same diamonds each time, it doesn't matter what they were or what they are, um, you're still picking up little diamonds. Whether, you know, if they were maybe different shaped or in, you know, some of them you have to climb or something like that to get to, uh, then, then maybe then maybe that would, you know, make it a little bit more of a interesting challenge then, shall we say. However, I mean, like I said, I'm only 30 levels in. There could be many, many more things to come, um, and I haven't even scratched the surface yet. There are 100 levels by default, and there's also an editor that uh, you can put up your own designed maps and then challenge other people around the world to play, and I'll be showing you a little bit of that a little bit later on in the video. Now, I said that it's a stealth game, and I, I think, and I, and I also said that, you know, that the colour and the... the the aesthetic of it seems seems to be one of its strengths. One of its other strengths is when there is chatting on it, when there is story that's being done, it's a very strong voice acting cast. I like it. Simple as that. Um, I think it goes together very well. I think that Mike has got a good team there and it's it's you know it's fairly well written. 
what I have heard I like and I just wish there was a little bit more of it I think that's probably my biggest bugbear with it a little bit more talking guys a little less reading maybe because you can pick up little bits on the floor and read them but at the end of the day does it do stealth well yes does it look well does it look well does it look good yes does it play well I'm running on Windows 10 I'll show you the settings uh, when I show you the editor I'm set and running on pretty much full spec. It runs perfectly fine. It runs lovely. It runs smooth. It, it, it recorded smooth, and I haven't had any crashes or anything like that. Now, probably the, the best thing about the whole part of it before we get into the settings is the reason why you want to really get into the game, and the reason why you do get into the game is because you want to beat that time, and you want to maybe get the best time. You, I think this would probably be brilliant for speedrunners. Uh, you, you'll then put up your best time. You can then make your own map. You can try and beat your friends at the, you know, one of the hundred maps. <coughs> you, there's going to be leaderboards. After a couple of days of play, you know, people that will rush through it and God, you run and find out how they're going to do it. There'll be videos up of people showing you the optimal ways of doing things and I'm sure YouTube will be full of this. And I think that's probably where it's really, really going to shine is uh, in those moments uh, in possibly a week's time when people have completed the, you know, the hundred and everybody's trying to beat those times over and over again. Now. That was a little bit of the game there, and I think I'll just pop into one last one to show you that the colours can vary quite a bit. Got a red and yellow one there, however it's still crisp and clear and clean, which in my mind is exactly what you need in a stealth game to know exactly where you need to go. So, without further ado, I think what we'll do is we'll exit the game and we'll have a little look at the options and some of the other bits and bobs in the game. So here we are at the start menu, again very highly stylized. I quite like it, I like a nice little, nice little bit of music going on in the background there. Um, so, here we go, so this is what it looks like at the start. Now this may actually crash because there is a little bit of a problem with it. This is, uh, this is still day one, um, it seems to be when you're recording it it can crash when you're saving settings, so if it does I'll just stitch it together. So you've got your run simulation, your edit simulation, but first things first we're going to be doing the settings. So you've got your basic settings, uh, you've got your English, French, German, Italian, Spanish, and back to English. Uh, separate sliders for voice effects and music. You've got your brightness, your contrast, and your gamma. Uh, subtitles and you can also reset the story from here should you want to uh, just in case you want to play through again um, we'll keep the settings there you go didn't crash it's fine now next one down advanced settings so it will go up to 2k I'm not sure if it goes further than that I am just running it off a 60 Hertz uh, monitor so you know unfortunately I can't really see if it goes any further You've got shadow mo mode, soft or hard or none. Uh, shadow cascades goes up to four. Goes from none, two, and four. Now anti-aliasing doesn't actually tell you what anti-aliasing it is, but it does go up to times eight, so two, four, eight, or none. And obviously the option for full screen. We will apply those settings. Now controls, fully rebindable keys. As far as I, yep, fully rebindable keys. Um, always nice to have. Everything's pretty much where I wanted it anyway, so I didn't have any problems with it whatsoever. And as you can see, there's not actually that many um, these to worry about. But uh, always nice to have. Always, always nice to have. There is a customised character in here as well, I don't seem to be able to do anything with him, um, I presume that comes later, um, and then also you've got Alan, Alan and Midge as well um, to play with, so again there's going to be three people, maybe they've got different styles of doing things, different, um, different gadgets that they can pick up, which again, just 
so he just makes the 100 levels, possibly into 300 levels, are already there. Now, one of the best things about the whole thing, secondary really to the game, but really going to make this game kind of live for quite a long time, is this. So, it's mouse driven up here, but it's key driven on the floor. We're talking about floors, let's place them down, shall we? So, as you can hear, I'm just tapping away. Here's a couple of floors, and this is this is it, this is the editor. So, what we'll do is we'll just, I'm not gonna make a level, but I'll give you an idea of kind of how easy this is going to be for people to set up. So there's some floors. You can change things like heights. You can have a bright turquoisey floor if you want, or you can have it as bright as day, whatever you like. There we go, we black. Let's uh, put the brightness down. Let's put some walls on. There we go, so let's have the height of the wall as that. And as you can see, it's as easy as day to actually... Oh, that's hue, that's going to be hue. And then, there we go, we can change the colour of them and we can have those brighter if we like. There's props here, so you've got your type, you've got your game logic, alarm systems, force fields. You're hiding your shadow, your noisy props. So let's, let's pop down a noisy prop, shall we? Have a noisy prop right there. So toilet. Uh, one of the things that you can kind of flash and it'll get the people to turn around. Again, you can change the rotation, the uh, the what it is, the prop, electro trap, a sink. There we go. Let's have a toilet, and you can rotate it around there. So, have it like that. We will have an NPC there. There's a pawn. And you have pawn, archer, hound, knight, rogue, turret. There's a fair few things that I haven't actually come across yet. Text. Stick a bit of text on the ground. Boom. Edit it. I am not very good at this game said Phil. There you go. And that will come up for people to do as well. The player. Rotate the player. Where does the player start? So the player, the player starts there. The player starts wherever. Light. Quite like this. You can change where the light's coming from. So you could actually maybe hide one of these behind somewhere. And if you have the light, maybe you have the light, so you could only see its shadow coming from there, that kind of thing. You can be quite sneaky with things like this, because you can rotate it as well. And, again, you can change all of the kind of brightness levels, and you can have it really quite dark as well, so you can have things like this stood out. You can change your camera as well. Change the colours of everything. There you go, make everything a bit duller. And then you can, obviously you can name it, you can put a description, you can have the character, which is the soldier, the thug, tutorial, Gisborne, the actor, the blacksmith, the architect, the assassin, the banker, the coward, the deposed queen, the heir, the judge, the king of the south, and so on and so forth. And then you can upload it and other people can play it. Awesome source, yes, I will discard that. So when you first go in, you will notice that these are your core, these are the ones that you always do. And like I said, they've got a little bit, so the merchant's lavish home betrays his wealth. Wealth derived by selling men and women into the factories of the north. So as you can see, you get, you get your kind of backstory here. And there's all the times as well that you need to beat the thing that you keep on coming back to. Local, no levels found online. Again, this is I think day two that I'm putting this out on now and there's already... well that's 20 there. People have really got into this as you can see and boom! Our Sir Cucumber has done it in the best 36.48 and there's also staff picks as well. 
that is actually Mike, isn't it? Yeah. So the longevity of this game is going to be kept by basically, you know, the people doing this. However, if you've got three people to play with, it's a hundred levels each, and those two other people do have different powers, then that's technically three hundred. Uh, that is technically three hundred right there. And I can't really grumble for that. I mean, it's currently selling for £13.49 with a bit of a discount. Or it's £14.99. That's pounds sterling. I'm not sure what that would be in US dollars. A little bit more, maybe $20, something like that. Maybe a little bit less. So £13.49 for potentially, at the minimum, 300 levels. 100 for each character. And all of this time beating and on day two when I can scroll that's 20, 20, it's 40, another 60, another 80, you, you know what I mean. Uh, Mike's extremely hard time so maybe that was actually Mike himself, I'm not entirely sure but yeah there's all of these things that are going to keep the longevity and keep it going. So when you put together the price point, which I think is probably right, 15 quid, you, you've, you've, you've got the nice setting, it runs very well, it, it does stealth very well, which is probably the most important. You've got all this added extra, which to be honest is very nice to see. There's a couple of nitpicky bits, but you know, it hasn't taken away from my enjoyment of the game and I want to go back and play more. I want to see what the 100 levels are like and I want to get a little bit frustrated and see if I can go back in and do it better and I think that core mechanic of it is what's going to really sell to people and really going to make them want to at least look at it. So guys, girls, you've got nothing to lose. It's on Steam. £13.49 right now, which is £1.50 cheaper. You, you've got the two hours or, or two week um, Steam refund if you really need it, but I, I can more or less guarantee if you if you like stealth games or if you're just good at stealth games, which I am not, then you're going to love it. If I love it and I'm crap at them, then if you, if you like if you like it, then you you you'll really like it. And that's my, you know, that's just my honest opinion there. I think it's solid. I think it does what it does well, and I think it's got a fair bit of life in it. Chalk this one up to well done, Mike Bithell. He's gone for a completely different setting, a completely different game, and apart from a, a few niggling worries and a few little niggly bits and bobs here there. It's a solid damn game, and uh, I am quite happy to recommend this. So, my name has been Phil, badly named Twitch. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment, share, shout, G+, and all that good stuff. And I will see you tomorrow, I believe. It's Thursday today, so it'll be uh, Friday for uh, my Friday's Windows 10 pick. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.